What's up, Cal Gang? All right, we got some uh, fundamental theorem of line integrals questions right here. And uh, this question's kind of hard, actually. Oh, I'm not even in frame, hold on. There you go, you guys can see me if I get down here now, right? All right, so this question uh, has a lot of steps. It actually has four steps to it, which is why I'm gonna solve every one of them for you. So the first part of this is it wants us to evaluate it directly. And let me tell you, you're gonna wanna use the fundamental theorem of line integrals for this one because it gets a little messy, but I'm gonna show you how to do it because I've solved it a couple times now and it's kind, of, uh, it's kind of a doozy. All right, so first we've gotta identify what our line is, right? So our line starts here at negative two, zero, and goes to two, zero, right? So how do we say this? Well, we can write this line as r of t, and we're gonna set it equal to, so let's say that x is equal to cosine of t, right? the two cosine of t, because x is equal to r cosine of theta, right? If we're using polar, we're gonna use polar for this. So because x is equal to r cosine of t, we know that the radius is two, so x is gonna be equal to two cosine of t, and uh, as you can guess, y is gonna be equal to two sine of t. And our integral is gonna go from, uh, not zero, it's gonna go from pi, because it's all the way over here, two t, and then two two pi. All right, so we have that here. So now we can find r prime of t, and we equal to negative two sine of t to cosine of t, right? Now, in order to set up our integral, you're gonna have to for, you're gonna have to dot the um, the uh, the force field with the uh, derivative of your line. So on the integral from pi to two pi, that's going to be. But you also have to exchange what your x's and y's for what we found out here. So x is equal to, or so for here, our i is going to be equal to 3x squared plus 3y squared, but we know that x is equal to 2 cosine of t. So what this is going to be is 3 times 4 cosine squared of t plus um, 4 sine squared of t. Uh, so that's just your first value. And then so 2xy, so it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2, so it's going to be 8. 8 cosine of t sine of t. So that's what your uh, force function is going to look like in terms of t. And then r prime of t, so negative 2 sine of t, uh, 2 cosine of t, dt. All right, so that's what your integral looks like, and uh, it's pretty long, and I'm going to solve it now. It, it simplifies a little bit, but it's going to take a while. This is going to be a long video to stick in for it. So it's still going to be from pi to 2 pi. So I'm going to simplify this. So it's going to be a 12, but then times negative 2, 16, negative 24 cosine of squared of t, but then also sine of t, plus, um, so it's going to be actually negative, so minus 8 sine third of t, and then multiplying this, plus 16 cosine squared of t, sine of t, dt. All right, so you notice that these both have cosine squared of t and sine of t, so you can combine them together. So this will be negative 8, and then this will be negative 8. So what I'm going to actually do is bring out a negative 8. Negative 8. And then, so now we're going to have two functions left. We're going to have this cosine squared sine of t, and then sine squared of t. So I'm going to break these into two separate integrals. So this one's going to be pi to 2 pi. That's going to be, um, so cosine squared of t, sine of t, dt. And it's going to be plus this integral over here which is gonna be eighth sine of t, or just gonna be sine third of t. But uh, what we can do is we can rewrite this as sine of t, and then one minus cosine squared of t. And what this is gonna let us do is make a u sub. So now we have to u sub both of these. So u is equal to cosine squared, or not cosine squared, just cosine of t. So that means du is equal to negative sine of t, right? So then reevaluating our bounds, u of pi is equal to negative one, but then u of two pi is equal to one. And then over here we have the same thing, u is equal to cosine of t, du is equal to negative sine of t. That's good handwriting right there. Oof, my arm's getting tired. All right, so then reevaluating our bounds, I forgot to put this in. So again, u of pi is gonna be negative one, u of two pi is gonna be equal to one. So now we can rewrite this integral with u instead. So i is equal to negative eight, integral from negative one to one. And I'm just gonna combine them together because uh, it's gonna be easier to see that way probably. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be u squared, and then this is going to be plus one minus u squared, right? Oh, wow, that's actually pretty cool. I never noticed how that worked out. That works, right? Yeah, let me try this. du, that's gonna obviously be equal to, all right, so negative eight 
you to the third over a three. Actually, those are gonna cancel out. You're just gonna get one, aren't you? So it's just gonna be you, negative one to one, which is just gonna be negative eight of one plus one. It's gonna be equal to negative 16. Let me double check that, make sure I got it right. I put a negative somewhere, hold up. Where'd the negative go? Oh, okay, I forgot something. I forgot to throw out this negative, right? So it's just gonna be negative here and negative here. It's gonna get rid of this negative here. Cancel out, cancel out, cancel out. Positive 16. Forgive me guys, I've solved this three times now and I got it wrong after my third time. But, okay, so that's how you find it using the long roundabout way. I would not recommend doing this. Um, we're gonna use the fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm gonna show you how much easier it is to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, get rid of all this. 16 is our answer, I'll remember that probably. All right, boom. All right, fundamental theorem of calculus time. So what that says is that in this term, this is P, this is Q, right? And it says that if you have, wait, hold on, am I using Green's theorem or fundamental theorem of calculus? I'm using fundamental theorem of calculus. I don't know what I'm talking about. It basically, it says if the field is conservative, so what does conservative mean? So conservative means that if del Q over del X, this, if you're taking this function with respect to X is equal to del P over del Y, then your field is conservative. And what, when your field is conservative, that means that your force vector is equal to the gradient vector of a function F. And what we're gonna to try to find is this function F, not just the gradient, because if we can find the function F, we can basically say that any, any um, point from you know, A to B is just gonna be equal to F of this minus F of this, right? So we're trying to find F of X, Y. So let's try that. So we have to prove this. So let's see, so the derivative of Q with respect to X is just equal to two Y, and the derivative of P with respect to Y is equal to two Y, go figure. Therefore, our field is conservative. Pretty cool. So now we can go ahead and try to figure this out. But what this tells us is that our gradient is equal to this. So we can say that our gradient of f is equal to 3x squared plus y squared 2xy. And what this says is that this is the derivative of f with respect to x, and this is the derivative of f with respect to y, right? That's what this means. So what if we take the integral of this? Because we're trying to find just a normal function of f. So if we take the integral of this with respect to x, so it's gonna be del f over del x with respect to x. You're taking this, the integral of this with respect to x. You're gonna get x to the third plus uh, xy squared, right? And then there's gonna be a constant, of course. So I'm gonna say our constant is a function of x. Uh, you'll see why later. So I'm just gonna say it's g of x, probably not. So this is f basically, but we have this g of x, and we wanna find out what this g of x is. So to find that out, you're gonna take the derivative but with respect to x. So the derivative of f with respect to x is gonna be equal to uh, 3x squared plus y squared plus g prime of x. All right, but we also have, you see that this is the derivative of f with respect to x too, right? So, but it's also equal to 3x squared plus y squared. So you can see that the derivative of g prime, or you know, the g prime of x is just gonna be equal to zero. It's not gonna have any meaningful uh, function. So that means that g of x is equal to zero too. And then we have our f function, which is this right here. But we have that g of x is equal to zero. So now we have that f of xy is equal to x third plus xy squared. Right, okay, so perfect. This is what we have. So now we can use our fundamental theorem of calculus it says that if you take our point here, our, our endpoint, and we subtract it, our, end, our starting point with this function, we'll get our uh, we'll get what the uh, we'll get the work required basically. So this is two zero obviously, and this is negative two zero. So it goes from here to here. So what we're gonna do it's gonna be f of uh, two zero minus f of negative two zero. So what is this gonna be equal to? So let's see, two zero, uh, so it's gonna be eight uh, plus uh, y zero, so it's gonna be plus zero, minus a negative eight 
plus zero, which is equal to 16. That's what we found earlier. So that's pretty cool. Figured it out that you can do it this way. So uh, if this is complicated, if this is your first time seeing this, I recommend you watch uh, Professor Leonard, because uh, he did a really good job explaining this in his YouTube tutorial, YouTube series. Uh, so yeah, watch that if you're having any issues with this. So now I'm gonna show you all something cool. When your field is conservative, what that means is it doesn't matter what order you take from A to B, right? So here he shows us that we're taking this curve around, but what's true is we can take this curve, we can take this curve, we can take this curve, we're all gonna get the exact same work function. So taking that information, let's say, let's go easy. Let's go from here to here. What is this line? I'm gonna erase it more. We're gonna write an easier line because it's telling us to. So we're going to cross, we're going to go straight across. So our R of t is going to be, it's going to be our starting point. So it's going to be negative 2 plus, and it goes across 4t, across x. And then you can see y doesn't change at all. So it's 0. Um, right? I mean, yeah, y starts at 0, goes nowhere. It says 0. So we take the derivative of this, r prime of t is equal to 4, 0. And so now we can set up our, uh, our you know, our line integral problem. It's going to look like this. Oh, I forgot to put t is less than 0, or greater than 0, but less than 1. So it goes from 0 to 1. So we have to integrate, we have to put in for x squared, so it's going to be 3. So it's going to be uh, 16t squared minus 16t plus 4, right? Um, plus y squared, it's going to be 0. And we don't even have to worry about the next part, right? Because it's, uh, it's just going to be 0 because so you're going to cross with the 0. But actually, you'd find that it's also equal to 0. And then it's going to be dotted with 4, 0, dt. OK? So let's solve this. This looks a lot easier to work with than our first function. There's no signs. There's no any of that. It's easy. So what we're going to find is that you can bring up, you can bring up a 16, right? Because you're going to uh, get a big number here. I don't want to do all this math. Let's just bring out a 12, because it's 12, it's nice. 0 to 1, because the 4 is going to dot product all the way over here. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be 12, bring the 12 out, so it's going to be 16t squared minus 16t plus 4 dt. Now this is pretty easy to solve. 12, so it's going to be 16t to the third over 3 minus 8t plus 4, or t squared plus 4t from 0 to 1. OK, let's solve this. So it's going to be 16 over 3 minus, uh, what is this, minus 8 plus 4. Ooh, we got some big numbers to work with. I might have to be doing some uh, intense mental math. So it's going to be, let's see. So it's going to be, so it's going to be 4 thirds. So 12 times 4 thirds, right? And then so 12 times 4 is 48 over 30, which is equal to 16. That is the third time we found that answer is 16. But all these ways are different. And it's pretty cool, right? This stuff's kind of fun. You know, I, I really like these kind of problems where you're solving in multiple different ways. Because it kind of just shows you that math is pretty cool, right? It sticks together. It, it stays constant. So uh, that's how you solve these kind of problems. Pretty tough stuff, but uh, just keep working with it and know your fundamental rules of calculus. And uh, yeah, have some fun.